r slash ask reddit what are the strangest house rules you've seen in a person's house i babysat for a family that locked us in the house i called my dad and he said if i felt trapped i could throw a chair through a window and he'd cover it no questions asked never babysat for them again your dad sounds like a wonderful man he was an all-time great i miss the old goat my step grandmother does not let anyone under 16 once she considers children sit on her furniture they have to sit on the floor it should be noted that this rule didn't apply to her biological grandchildren come up behind her and whisper in her ear when you die we're going to donate all your furniture to a daycare had a friend that had to go to bed at 7 p.m every night because that was the bedtime for his younger siblings he was 14 his mom would flip out if he tried to stay awake any longer that mother ducker was seeing every single cartoon before school for sure i used to do that but we wouldn't go to bed early we'd wake up at 5 30 for yu yu hakusho and then the two episodes of captain planet that were on then go back to sleep before school started the weird part is i don't think i had an alarm i just woke up at that time to watch those shows I landed a summer babysitting job when I was 15 or 16, and got yelled at because I took Cheetos, Doritos and pretzels and put them all in the same bowl. They were snack sized bags, and I'd eaten the whole bowl full, but there must have been crumb evidence for Sherlock mom. She said we don't mix our food in this house, and then she fired me soon after because she said she wasn't comfortable with me doing stuff like that around her kids. Little did she know that you were ahead of the curve and had created Di Munchie's trademark sign. A friend I visited a few times when I was a kid had really strange parents. One weird thing was when my mum called his mum to arrange a time. His mum said that she'd like it if I brought a shirt I'd already worn to their house. She said they had a rescue dog that lost its shit around new people and would keep it in the bathroom for my first visit. Then put my shirt in its bed so it got used to my scent for next time. I ducking did it too. Dog still went nuts. There were wacky bathroom rules. Like if I had to go she'd say one or two. Then she would carefully count the number of squares and hand it to me. This was particularly embarrassing since I had a little crush on my friend and he was always there to see me say what I had to do. It was never enough. I always, always ended up poking a finger through the TP and they never had soap. I had to wash my ducking hands with shampoo. Once it was dog shampoo. LOL I hated it there. The trick is to say number 2 every time and then save up and hide the extra squares for later. Pro tip for you there. No charge. Why not just bring extra TP in your pockets or a purse before you even come in? I managed to do that a couple of times. But my dad was weirdly paranoid and overbearing. If I said I was getting ready to go out, he'd come upstairs with me to make sure I wasn't taking any good toys with me, and would get pissy about me taking a handful of TP. It was too much hassle for my little brain lol. You can't ducking ration toilet paper. Sometimes you simply have a wetter shit than other times. You can't predict that nonsense. No speaking above what was essentially a whispered volume. Girlfriend's father considered loud talking. What the rest of us considered normal volume talking. To be trashy. Sounds like Milford man. You can always tell a Milford man. I had a friend whose family was like this too. Everyone always had to be as quiet as possible all the time. We'd watch TV and always put the TV on mute during commercials. Which actually wasn't so bad. But then I'd try to strike up a conversation to fill the silence and was shushed. Sometimes we listened to music in the basement and his sister would come running down from two floors up demanding that we turn it down. It was like the whole family was living in that movie with John Krasinski about being silent all the time or they'd get eaten by monsters. I had a friend whose parents would lock her in her room at night. As in, the lock was on the outside of the door and once she was in for the night the door was locked and there was no leaving. Even for the bathroom. Holy shit. Okay some clarity. I think I was like 8. So I don't know if kinky sex was involved. This was the 80s so it wasn't as frowned upon. Plus, as many of you say, sometimes there's a reason for it. I didn't know these kids very well at all and didn't get to know them beyond this weird thing with the doors. All I remember was that the door was locked at night once they were in for bed. 
I remember asking about the bathroom and I feel like she was just like we go before bed. I always woke up in the middle of the night to go so it stuck with me. She obviously saw nothing weird about it. I can't remember if I slept over but I was a huge chicken and hated sleeping over other people's houses so I don't think I did. I do remember being frightened about fires happening though bc it was a fear of mine that I would be away from my family and either they would die and leave me alone or I would die and leave them. IDK. I was weird. She and her family were weird and I didn't hang out with her for very long. I think they only stayed in my neighborhood a few years before moving. The local fire marshal might have something to say about that. I think that, even as an 8 year old I was like that's a ducking fire hazard. My really good friends just bought a nice house in a nice neighborhood all three of the former children's bedrooms have locks on the outside of the bedroom doors, padlocks drilled into the door and frame, the windows had locks as well as the closets, even the bathroom. Half bath and pantry had padlocks. At first when we were helping them move in we thought it was just a weird child proofing thing. We quickly realized that the former owners were obviously mistreating their kids, 12 year old, 7 year old and twin 4 year olds, several broken doors, many holes punched into the walls, at adult height, and food hidden in AC vents, where huge indicators CPS was called. They came out and took pictures. My friends are less than pleased that they bought a house from horrible people. Whenever I went over to a friend's house, I wasn't ever actually allowed inside. Instead we always hung out in a trailer that was parked right outside of his place and if we needed to use a bathroom the mother forced us to go in a bucket. Meth lab in the house. The explanation I got was that the house was too messy and never cleaned. Also, his sister owned a bunch of birds and never cleaned up after them which resulted in magazines on the floor just covered in bird poop. I had a friend like this. We always played out front. She let me in to use the bathroom one time when her mom wasn't home. It was a hoarder house. The kitchen sink was stacked to the ceiling and the hallways were narrowed by junk. The bathroom was surprisingly clean though. I once had a friend's mom tell me we sit down to pee in this house. I guess I get it and it would have made sense other than I'm a girl. How the hell did she think I took a leak? Standing up proud and giving a stereotypical superhero stance. Personally I like doing a handstand and trying to arc it in from across the room. I call it the fountain. My friend's mom was convinced that vomit corroded the pipes and could cause them to burst. So we had to go puke outside if we were sick. How often were you vomiting at your friend's house? Enough to corrode the pipes. My cousin's house when I was a kid, there was a no reading during the day rule. I was a bookish kid terrified of my mad uncle so I just went along with it. Was it to encourage outside play? It was to keep the kids out the house. He hated having them around. Such a shame books don't work outside. My friend's mom wouldn't let you have a drink at the dinner table because she didn't want you to fill up on water and not finish your food. It didn't matter what it was or if you choked. No liquid until after dinner. She would also make you eat everything or she would save it for you to finish later or just wouldn't let you leave the table until you were done. I grew up in Mexico. My school had a lot of exchange programs abroad. So in 9th grade, I went to Boston. I stayed with a guy from the HS and his dad. Pretty weird family. But the strangest thing was that his father told me that I could not flush pancakes in the toilet. He literally meant pancakes. It was not a euphemism. Because I asked his son about it and he said yeah. There was an incident once. There should be a subreddit dedicated to explaining why that's a rule for oddball stuff like this. Pictures. Videos. ETC would be very encouraged. Growing up. Myself and often with other friends, would do sleepovers at a buddy's house. He was a bedwetter and wore diapers to bed, but we were cool with it, never any teasing or anything. His mother would demand that we all wear diapers to bed when sleeping over, which was odd, but it made our buddy even more uncomfortable about his situation. Poor dude would apologize constantly about the fact that we had to use them too. You and your buddies were some good friends, very cool. Anytime I was over at their house and we would go outside and play, I would have to knock on the door each time to come back in, even if I had been there for a while or if I had just walked in with their kid. 
Their mother kept tabs on exactly how much I ate or drank while I was there and expected me to work for whatever they had given me. I had accidentally left something by the door and I realized after I got a few steps away from their porch so I just opened the door and reached in to grab it. Her mother grabbed my arm and jerked me back into the house and screamed how I was a guest at their house and that I was to always knock before entering. How I was a rude child. She didn't care that I was just there and what I grabbed was mine etc. I had known this woman my entire life. We lived in the same neighborhood. She knew all of my extended family and treated me like I was some stranger. That was my last day playing over there. Holy crap. This is verbatim what I was like playing with the neighbors across the street from me as a kid. Grew up in a rural area. Their house was the closest. Next friend was at least a mile down the road. Big difference was that we were not allowed inside without their kids being present and had to be watched at all times. Once we were playing on the swing set and I had to pee. Kid said just go in through the slider in the basement and use the bathroom. Nobody will notice. So little 9 year old me. Gets into the doorway take off my shoes. Slowly make my way to the bathroom. I get the door almost closed as four fingers spring around from outside and rip the door open. It was his mom and she was livid absolutely infuriated at the fact that i was in their house without their kid she escorted me back outside slammed the door shut and locked it behind me at this point i was ready to pee my pants so i went out back behind their barn and started to pee at that moment little seven year old sister comes around the corner and sees what i'm doing we make eye contact she doesn't say a word then turns and runs to the house screaming for her mom and dad she told them I pulled it out in front of her and when she disagreed to touch it I then tried to pee on her. My family and their family had been friends for a solid 10 years at this point. I was never allowed over again and my dad refused to hear what they had to say. Only ever spoke to the kids on the bus and at school. To this day, I think about those times and how absolutely ridiculous they were being. Duck you Tom and Lenit. My dad had a strict rule. No music with words. I'm still wondering how Beethoven's 9th ended. Play Joe Satriani and John 5 constantly for him. I'm a medic. So we go into people's homes every day. We had a cardiac arrest. So we were working a man. And the wife was having a fit about the mess we were making. Yes. There was some garbage from the pads. Needles. Meds. But we put all of it into our jump bag. She was screaming at us about it. I told her that her husband was very sick and we were doing everything we could to help. She said she didn't care if he died as long as we didn't make a mess. I wonder what could have possibly made the man so stressed that he had a heart attack. This is horrifying. I kind of thought maybe it was a distraction or a form of denial of what was happening. But little surprises me with people anymore. My grandparents had a very specific order that food should be eaten. We're a big English family and tea would be served at 5pm or so. After lunch at 1pm. Plates and dishes would be placed on the dining room table all at once. But, could only be consumed in the correct order. Sandwiches first. Then sausage rolls assorted savouries. Then sweet foods. It's only so strange. Because after my generation. 16 of us. My grandmother now couldn't give less of a shit, and all the rules are out of the window, especially for great grandchildren and our spouses. We're just pretty bitter that we would get such a telling off for eating a sausage roll before a sandwich. Since now apparently you can have chocolate biscuits before 2pm. Anarchy. I had a boyfriend who would only eat one thing at a time. For example, he'd eat his steak, then the potato, then the vegetables, never mixing it up and never combining anything into one mouthful. I never noticed, because I don't care how people eat. But boy did he notice that I don't eat my food in any order whatsoever. I'll even gasp, eat steak and potato in the same mouthful. We were together for three years, and it always baffled him how I ate. He'd look at me all astonished. You're done with your steak? No, no, sweetie. I'm just eating some vegetables at the moment. I'll get back to the steak. I live with my grandmother and our house has two bathrooms. One bathroom is her bathroom exclusively and the other bathroom is everyone else's bathroom. If you use her bathroom you're shunned from seeing her or being in her home for life. My cousin and her three kids, her great grandchildren, 
have been banned from seeing my grandmother ever again because we completely forgot to tell my cousin's ex-husband about the bathroom rule. It's not a loss. Cousin and kids are better off without her. Straight up ducking banished. With no shits given to. Great grandkids ask why they can't see great grandma sometimes. We really have no idea how to explain that great grandma is a psychopath to them. Had a babysitter when I was about 8 and my sister was 5. The rule was all day we had to sit on the stairs. No couch. No kitchen table. Nothing literally had to stay on the stairs the whole day. Which was pretty ducking uncomfortable even to my 8 year old body and me and my sister were pretty well behaved so we did it without much question. When my mom would come pick us up and started talking for what seemed like forever. Of course. We would get to sit on the couch. Only years later did I realize how weird and shitty that was. I had a babysitter kind of like that. She had this tiny little 8x8 room in her house. Half of it was filled up with a playpen where a couple of toddlers would hang out. And she'd cram 7 of us for 10 year old children in there. There was one sofa chair in the room but we weren't allowed to sit on it. Her son or nephew or grandson not really sure how old she was, was allowed to sit on the coach in the living room and play video games while we literally just sat there on the floor. We could see him from the room, but not the TV. My friend's mom was a huge germaphobe, so she kept bottles of hand sanitizer and a stack of napkins by the door, and you had to use them before entering the house. If you didn't, she'd close the door in your face. Also, she required anyone who wanted to pet her dog or cat. You had to brush them before and after to help diminish any harmful human toxins. There is now evidence that keeping your home so clean encourages allergies and a weak immune system. That's why I never clean and throw my trash on the floor. So a few years back I was at a party and a homeowner had a list of house rules on a chalkboard. The one that sort of made me double take was overnight guests are asked not to masturbate. I was a little confused. I mean nobody wants to think of someone else jerking it in their home. In their sheets. But that seems a little weird. Was there an incident that incited this? No hitting. But putting your hand on them and hitting your own hand was an acceptable loophole. The father convinced the kids that the heel or butt of the bread was the best and that kids had to take turns because entire loaves were going bad from both heels being snatched. I arrived with my friend and we weren't present when groceries were brought in. Older brother Tony jumped his turn and took a heel for his sandwich. My friend Noel jumped Tony with a hand on his shoulder and wailed on his own hand screaming about getting his bread butt. Neighbor's house for breakfast. They put powdered sugar and syrup on the table for waffles. I thought, oh yeah I only get syrup at my house and douse the waffles with powdered sugar. I pick up the syrup. We only use one or the other at this house. The mom says, I ate dry and tasteless powder sugar covered waffles. The day. You chose, poorly. One of my friends had a sheet clipboard in the bathroom where he asked anybody who take a shit to record the day, time, and guest length of the poop. Apparently he gives the winner a gram of weed every month lol. He ate a cheat. If you are eating and you drop your fork, everybody drops their fork. Kinda like this one. Sounds funny. They all shared a towel after showering. Like one towel for everyone. For one or two days. When I visited I asked where the towels were so I could shower after the pool they looked at me like I had two heads. Explained the towel sharing situation. Because you're clean when you dry off so it's still clean. Yeah Mr. Friend's dad I don't want to dry my face after you've dried your balls on it. My friend David was a tough guy. Which was all the more cool that he chose to hang out with a scrawny nerd like me. We went back to his house. Once. And only once. Which was literally 4 houses down the street from me. It was a small, normal house. With a small comfortable living room. When I plopped into the big easy chair. David went white as a ghost. That's my dad's chair. Pause. No one's allowed to sit there. Pause. Ever. If he sees you in his chair, he'll bring the belt. Well, I was a small kid. But even I knew that some other person's parent wasn't going to be allowed to beat the shit out of me with his belt. So I said, nonchalantly, so what, he can't hit me, my tough guy friend, and, truth be told, a bit of a bully to other kids, just got paler and paler. Then he said, very quietly, he might not wallop you, but he'll wallop me instead. I hopped off the chair like a shot, and learned a shitload that day. 
stayed with a neighbor during a family emergency. Estranged grandparent was deathly ill far away and parents had to make some oh shit arrangements for child care. Neighbor had 5 kids. The dad had a 1 tub of water for the family rule. This was in a bathtub with a shower and when a normal water bill for a large family would be under $40 a month so I still don't get why. Dad would bathe, then mom, then oldest to youngest, guests last. The water was cold, dark with muck and had a greasy film of skin cells on it by my turn. I was 6 or 7 and tried to refuse but they shouted at me and I gave in. I gagged the whole time. Seriously duck you mark, you nasty ass swamp water douchebag. What the duck? Guests always go first. I was in a foster home from ages 5 to 7. They were religious and the rules were as follows. Women couldn't cut their hair, wear short sleeves after 5 years of age, could only wear dresses and nightgowns, even when swimming on vacation, and nobody could enter the home if wearing shorts. Pants were fine. The upside was the whole family ate dinner together every night and there was always dessert. As a kid coming from a home where food was not a plenty, I thought it was wonderful. I've stayed in touch over the years and went through the mom's 80th birthday party last summer. Lots of people were there in shorts, so the rules have obviously been relaxed over the years. One daughter even had hair a little below her shoulders, so that rule isn't enforced, either. When I was probably 7 or so, there was a kid down the block. I think he lived with his grandparents, who were weirdly strict with water. No using the hose to play in, during a time of sprinklers and water balloons to beat summer heat, and I think remembering him saying he'd have to pay $1 for a cup of water. They now work at Nestle trying to control all water in Africa. My mom was very sick, brain tumor in the 70s. So all of us 5 kids were farmed out to relatives. We had this one awful aunt who refused to let my 4 year old left handed brother eat with his left hand. Every night I would watch my poor little brother silently cry out of frustration trying not to use his left hand to eat. Meanwhile, her left handed daughter and husband sat at the same table using their left hands to eat. After a few months, I mentioned this to my left handed grandmother, other side of the family. Grandma promptly drove over to Auntie Witch's house, rounded up all five of us and punched Auntie in the face, with her left hand. We stayed with Grandma from then on. God bless you, Gran. I went to normal elementary school from ages 6-10 in South Compton. There was a white kid, let's call him Adam cause I forgot his name, whose house I had to go to for a group project. Now, mind you, I was an anxiety filled autistic child. So it was scary enough to go to someone's house as it was. Well, apparently, the kid didn't tell his parents me and two others were coming over for the group project. He admitted that no one ever comes over and so he invited us without permission. Probably to be rebellious. So, I rang the doorbell. The door opened, and the parents were standing there, extremely confused. Adam explained, and they were pissed at him. But they looked at me and eventually let me in. Now, I am half white. Half Indian and so while it was obvious I was a kid of color, I was still good enough. So, I'm in the house, we are working on the project, and the doorbell rings. Parents are shocked cause they thought it was just me. The door opened and standing were two kids. Both were black. The kids saw me and Adam and were about to walk in, when the parents slammed the door in their faces, and began shouting at Adam for inviting black people to their house. The rule was no blacks in their house. Living in South Compton, with a kid going to a school that was 80% black, I had a panic attack from the shouting, and they didn't know what to do, so they just told me to go home. I ran back to the shelter, we lived in a homeless shelter at the time, completely in shock. At the time, I couldn't fully comprehend what happened, having been in extreme anxiety, but looking back, it's just ducked up but hilarious at the same time I can't help but laugh and be mad simultaneously lol. This dude that managed local bands had a rule that only vegetarians could poop in his toilet. Find somewhere else to poop if you eat meat. Sink it is then. I was dating this girl that had this no shoes rule in her apartment. Okay, that's pretty common in a lot of countries. She was an excellent cook. She asked me to invite my best friend and his gf over and she'd cook for us. My buddy is a little wacky, but when they got there and we told him the no shoes rule, 
he acted a little put out, like it was some big imposition to take your shoes off. A few weeks later the four of us were getting to be good friends and my buddy invited us over for dinner. When we got there he and his gf were not wearing pants. He was in boxers and she was in panties. He said no pants. We have a no pants rule in this house. Luckily my gf thought it was pretty funny and we complied. She did say that if her came up with a topless rule she was bowing out. I was dating a girl just after high school. Her family was one of those families. Modern family type get together 7 nights a week families. Went to her house for a weekend. I wasn't allowed to go smoke. Because that would mean I'd be away from the group for too long. I went to the toilet and I had been gone for like 4 minutes when I heard a little search party looking for me. Wasn't allowed to go to bed when I was tired. It was like 2am. Wasn't allowed to go into town. To wander around alone. On Saturday morning. We spent the whole weekend together. Like every minute. Told this one couple weeks ago. But me and a buddy got roped in to help a cousin move. She basically sat on her fat ass all day just pointing and snorting out orders. Anyway we were getting ready to leave so my buddy was washing up and we were telling some of the other family by when this beach flips. Apparently she took the time to hang up the towels in the bathroom during us moving. So my buddy used them to dry his hands. But no you can't use those. Those are decorative only. How dare he. Not only did she not even tell anyone this rule. She assumed all households were this way. She didn't even put usable towels in the bathroom yet. Girlfriend's psycho roommate has this house rule where there is no noise past 10pm. Sounds mostly reasonable right? Well my girlfriend is a cook so she works odd hours. Often she only gets home at 1130 or midnight. She's not even supposed to use a microwave. Or cook. Opening the fridge is liable to solicit angry texts. I mean of course you should be quiet to a point but if you're quietly making dinner without being too noisy there shouldn't be a problem. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.